The Oklahoma City Thunder were the number one seed in the Western Conference this past season, and they just got 10 times better. Adding Alex Caruso and Isaiah Hartenstein while keeping all of their insane draft stash should have the entire Western Conference and NBA shaking in their boots. The Thunder have added two elite role players while retaining some of their own, and they may not even be done making moves yet. Oh yeah, they also added one of the highest upside prospects in this year's draft as well, and they're not even going to need him to play next season. The Oklahoma City Thunder have had the future in the NBA in the palm of their hands for a while now, and they still do while also having a team that I think should be the favorites out west. Sam Presti watched three MVPs slip through his hands without a ring, and proceeded to do any and everything possible to make sure the Larry O'Brien ends up in Oklahoma City. Today I'm going to be going over the Thunder's insane offseason so far, how they managed to get significantly better without losing any assets, and why they will run the Western Conference and NBA for years to come. Before we get into this, if y'all could like the video, sub the channel, and hit that noti bell, it would help me out a ton. We are so close to 4k, would really appreciate it. And without further ado, let's get right into the video. Sam Presti and OKC's first move of the offseason was a masterful one, moving Josh Giddy for Alex Caruso straight up. Much of the NBA community was in shock when the Thunder acquired one of the league's most sought after role players for the player that arguably hurt them the most this postseason without having to attach any of their seemingly endless draft assets. While Josh Giddy will be better in a scenario where he has the ball in his hands, this was still a steal. Alex Caruso is one of the league's best perimeter defenders while being a 40% three-point shooter and having some level of secondary ball handling ability. OKC kicked off this offseason by exchanging their worst starter who is due for an extension for a seamlessly fitting superstar role player. As a Sixers fan, I was in utter disbelief when this trade went down as Caruso was one of my favorite targets. I have no clue what the Bulls' objective was settling for just Giddy after demanding apparently up to four firsts for Caruso during the regular season, but I guess. I get Giddy has up in a scenario where he doesn't have to play off the ball as much as he did alongside Shea and OKC, but again, I don't know how you don't get at least some second rounders from OKC's vast draft stash. While the Caruso pickup was an A-plus move and the Thunder improved significantly from that alone, it was evident that the glaring hole with this Thunder team was size and rebounding. Thanks to OKC still having 30-plus million in cap space due to basically their whole core being on rookie deals, they were able to address this flaw in a major way. OKC agreed to a three-year, $87 million deal with Knicks big man Isaiah Hartenstein, and he like Caruso, is a seamless fit on both ends who provides great value on both ends. His defense and rebounding is the obvious stuff, but his connective passing and playmaking is also cream of the crop. I would say the $29 million a year on average is a slight overpay, but it's worth it to secure by far your best big man option, while again, not having to sacrifice any draft capital. Everyone knew the Thunder had many paths to improve after being the number one seed, but to improve as much as they did without giving up any of their draft stash is nothing short of insane. With this embarrassment of riches, you can take some risk for upside, and the Thunder did that with their 12th overall pick. With this selection, the Thunder selected Nikola Topic, who was projected as a high lottery pick prior to his partially torn ACL. Topic is believed to be one of the highest ceiling prospects in this draft, and OKC is so stacked that they can afford to take a guy that won't be ready to play until 2025-26. The 6'6 guard is a great playmaker and has indicators of becoming a great shooter as he shot nearly 88% from the free throw line. He has drawn Josh Giddy comparisons as a tall playmaker making guard, but these comparisons are very loose and lazy to say the least. Again, we won't be seeing Topic until the season after next, but he is yet another potential great player the Thunder have up their sleeve. Even with these three seemingly great moves, the Thunder decided they weren't done yet. They decided to decline the team options of Isaiah Joe and Aaron Wiggins to sign them to long-term deals, and I think these are both solid contracts. First up, we have Isaiah Joe the absolute sniper that my Sixers cut for literally nothing. He was signed to a four-year, $48 million deal. Joe shot 41.6% from deep last season and will continue to be an elite floor spacer for a Thunder team full of snipers. Next up, the Thunder extended versatile wing Aaron Wiggins on a five-year, $47 million deal. This is yet another great contract for the wing who shot over 49% from deep last season, albeit on about one and a half attempts. Wiggins is another great rotational find from Sam Presti, who 
who selected him with the 55th overall pick in the 2021 NBA draft. It just keeps getting better and better with this Thunder team, as their team is so young that even the roster pieces that were already here will be improving year over year for at least the next half decade or so. Chet Holmgren was truly elite in his rookie year, anchoring a top four defense with little to no help around the basket. Jalen Williams put up a hyper efficient 19, four and five and is still only 23 as well. You also have Kassam Wallace, who is coming off a rookie campaign where he showed great ability as a defender while shooting nearly 42% from deep. It goes without saying, but this obviously all revolves around your 25-year-old MVP candidate in Shea, who I believe also has a path to significant improvement should he become more of a volume three-point shooter. Sam Presti has constructed the ideal team for the modern NBA while keeping all of his draft capital. The job that he has done is truly unreal to the point where all you can blame him for is not going a little more in last season. He has constructed a mid-60s win quality team while hoarding assets for pretty much any move he would like to make down the road. Thunder fans, just be grateful because championships, multiple, are coming. This team was a number one seed already and have improved drastically while again, keeping a treasure chest of draft assets that can be used to outbid anyone for anyone. While we do have to deal with the Celtics out east, I'm still grateful that I'm not a fan of a Western Conference team because the Thunder will be a 60 win quality team for the next decade plus, even with the new CBA. This is because of how the Thunder can keep replenishing rookie contracts. I don't see how they could be slowed down. The Thunder were already a top tier team and they have made the jump from a contender to a likely Western Conference favorite while once again keeping every last pick. This this is the NBA's next dynasty who will defy the new CBA, and I firmly believe in a decade Sam Presti's name will be up there with the best executives to ever grace the NBA. That's gonna wrap this one up. If y'all enjoyed it, please like it up, sub the channel, hit that noti bell, comment down below. Again, man, like I, you know, I've said it 19 times, but just the job that has been done by Sam Presti is nothing short of absolutely unreal. The entire league, who, what team didn't want Alex Caruso? And you got him for Giddy straight up, which again, you know, I understand the Bulls, you know, they might have wanted a player, a piece that they could, you know, I guess build around. I guess they're going to build around, you know, again, that they're building their roster to fit around Josh Giddy. He has some potential, you know, he averaged whatever 16, 8, and 8, or I, I forget off the top of my head, or something like that. But, you know, again, he was their worst starter. And, and, and I mean, I, I'm fumbling over my words here, but they won 57 games last year and were the number one seed within a lot of situations. Whenever Giddy was on the court, the defense just sagging off of him. That's how good their spacing was. And now their spacing has gotten a million times better. I mean, again, you're, you're I, I, I shouldn't say that because you are going to have, you know, you're not going to be able to do the five out thing with Hart and Sign and Chet on the court, but everyone else around, you know, again, the spacing is still going to be absolutely unreal. You know, say, oh, okay. So they leave Hart and Sign now, but you have Caruso in there at the two. So they're still leaving a person. And again, man, this team, I, <sighs> Again, I'm just happy I'm not a Western Conference fan because they are going to be running it and running the NBA for a matter of fact. Everyone in the NBA should be scared, not just Western Conference fans. But yeah, once again, that is going to wrap this one up. If y'all enjoyed it, please like it up, sub the channel. Does help me out a ton. And man, this team is going to be absolutely unreal for a very, very long time. And they're, again, you know, again, I've said all these things, but just their roster is just going to keep improving and improving and improving. And Chet is already, you know, I'd say Chet had all-star impact last year and he's what, 20 years old. He, he might be 21 now. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I, 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 how old is Chet Holmgren? Let's see. Uh, okay. He's 22. So I'm bugging out, but, but okay. Oh, my bad. He's 22 again, man. Team's going to be ridiculous. I am just, man, I, I wish Sam Presti was my GM. But yeah, I'm out. Peace.